Mathematics in the Modern World In this video, I will talk about the oldest artifact that anthropologists and archaeologists ascribe to mathematics. This, they say, is the oldest known artifact that is about mathematics or it has a purpose that is mathematical in nature. So what is an artifact? An artifact, an artifact is an object or it can be traces of ancient culture. It is a product of human culture. And anthropologists and archaeologists, they always have an eye for artifacts because they tell us something about people who lived in the past, their culture, their life. But the particular artifact that anthropologists ascribe to the earliest forms of mathematics is, is actually not what you might think. It is actually a bone. So this bone came from the fibula of a baboon. A fibula is, a fibula is part of our legs. That is your fibula. And so this fibula came from the hind leg of a baboon. And this bone contains notches markings and this is the part which anthropologists say has a math content and so these bones reminds me of what we used to do or what we still do today to make tally marks so these things these notches here are actually something like that they are tally marks writing on bones is not unique to this part of the world using bones as a material on which to write is practiced by many cultures in the past. The origins of Chinese writing, for example, is tied to writing on bones. And so what is the Ishango bone for? They contain notches, and these are like tally marks. The consensus among anthropologists is this is a form of calendar. But this is not an ordinary calendar. The purpose of this calendar is to track the menstruation of women. So this is the Ishango bone. It is the oldest artifact anthropologists know about mathematics. And they discover this in Semliki River, right here in the country of Congo. Congo is a landlocked country. It is in Central Africa. And so the Semliki River is to be found here, close to Uganda. So this is where they found the Ishango bone. The purpose of this is to track the cycle of menstruation. Because this bone is so old, and the culture that produced this is uh, too far back in time, we cannot be sure about why. Why would they be interested to keep track of the menstruation of women? But we can make intelligent guesses about that because even today, we still do something like that. Women and men also do still track the menstruation cycle. And they track the menstruation cycle in order to track the fertility of women. So this one is a fertility bead. It's like a bracelet. And they use this to know when is a woman fertile and when is the woman not fertile? So this bead, the color red one, is the day when the woman discovers she is in her period. And so she will slide this rubber to this bead. With each day, she will slide the rubber. And when the rubber reaches this part, this means she is fertile here. And there is a high probability that if she is going to have a sexual intercourse, she can get pregnant. And when the rubber band gets here, this is when she becomes infertile again. So even today, we still do track the menstruation cycle of women. But I doubt it if the people from ancient Congo did this for purposes of knowing when they are fertile or when they are infertile. I think it is a not a far-fetched idea to say that they have a superstition about blood. They have superstitious uh, beliefs about menstruation. And for that reason, they must know when the period will come. So it shouldn't be taken as a far-fetched idea to imagine that the ancient people of Congo 
or the ancient people who lived near Semliki River would have strange ideas about menstruation because even today, even today, in the modern day world, people do have still fantastic beliefs about menstruation. In Nepal, for example, a woman who is bleeding during her period is someone who is impure and so she must not touch other people or she must be somewhat ostracized from the community during her period. In UK, they have this superstition which says that if a menstruating woman would touch vegetables and fruits, those fruits and vegetables are going to rot early. So many people have some aversion towards the menstrual blood. But, interestingly, not in the Philippines. Because in our country, some people have a kinder and more benign attitudes toward, towards menstruation. There are some women in our country who believe that if you dilute your menstruation blood in a basin of water and use it to wash your face, it will give you a smoother and whiter skin. And you know what? If this is not in the Philippines, I would find this truly ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised. If some women in our country do this, given the fact that they are so obsessed with getting a whiter and fairer skin. But you know what? There could be a practical side to tracking menstruation. Because in villages near jungles, adults would advise their women never to venture in the forests during their period because bears and wolves are known to have a keen sense of smell for the smell of blood. So there is some practical side to it. Do not venture into the forest during your period. So given our inferences about what might be the purpose of the Ishango bone, the oldest artifact that we have about mathematics, what does it tell us about the nature of mathematics? What is the purpose of math? At least, what is the purpose of the earliest artifact that has a mathematical design? Well, the title of this video presentation says it all. From the beginning of this slide, you saw there the saying, we cannot manage what we cannot measure. And so the purpose of the Ishangu bone, its essence, so to speak, is measurement. They want to measure the passing of the days when a woman would be in her period. When people were measuring the time, the days when a woman might be in her period, what did they want to manage? So it says there, what you cannot measure, you cannot manage. So if they measured the cycle of menstruation of women, what were they trying to manage? Well, they were trying to manage themselves, their behavior, their behavior in relation to women, and the behavior of menstruating women in relation to other people. So during her menstruation, a woman would have to be separated from the community if, if the belief was menstruation blood is somewhat impure. If a woman had assigned roles in the community, such as gathering wood, fruits, and yams from the forests, the community must manage the role of women so that he is not allowed to venture into the forest during her period. With the passing of years, hundreds of years and thousands of years, they had to measure other things. For the people of Samliki River, the purpose of the first artifact for math was, was to measure the days. With the passing of hundreds and thousands of years, it's not only days that they have to measure. They have to count the cattle and goats that they own. They have to measure the size of farming lots. They have to measure the quantity of wine. And they did this for the purpose of management. You cannot manage something if you cannot measure it. The purpose of the first instrument that has a mathematical design is for the purpose of measuring. With the Shango bone, they invented the calendar to manage their behavior in relation to menstruation. What cannot be measured cannot be managed. 